Thank you for taking the time to view this training session. In this session, we will provide an overview of Microsoft Azure business opportunities. In terms of how you run your business today and make money, nothing should really change in the way you think about Azure and how you make money on Azure. You still sell your authentication services. You still sell your backup strategy type services. You still sell your project-based SharePoint deployment services. It's how you go about delivering those services that you need to change. Rather than sitting back and waiting for your customer's procurement department and IT to set up your lab, which would have taken a few weeks, control your own destiny and bring your own environment. Bring your own Azure, whether it's MSDN or your own Azure that you provide, and start building things. You're going to virtualize everything on-premises anyway. Virtualize on-premises, virtualize on Azure, it doesn't matter. Because it's the same technology you can bring the virtual machine from Azure on-premises when you want to do quality assurance and run it for production. Also with Azure, you don't have to always assume the default standard is going to be on-premises all the time. In fact, moving forward, the standard should probably be that you develop in the cloud environment by default. If it needs to be deployed on-premises later, that's fine. It can do that. If, but if it can remain in the cloud, that's even better. When you develop something in the cloud, you create a subscription ID. In that subscription ID, you set up your network, you launch your virtual machine, you set up your database, and you start developing the app. Three weeks go by, and the Microsoft team has finally convinced the customer to buy Azure. It happens all the time. So now what do you do? You want to take what you've built and move it into the customer's Azure environment because the customer now owns Azure as well. You can go to the portal. You can issue a support ticket of realigning a sub-ID to another account. All you're doing is redirecting who pays the bill for that instance. You're no longer paying the bill. You're now redirecting the customer to pay the bill. You don't have to reconfigure anything. The cloud is the cloud. The VPN you establish from the customer to your cloud instance, that doesn't change. With a simple call to the customer support at Microsoft, the customer is now paying for that Azure instance. Because of that agility and speed to market, many of Microsoft's partners can sign a statement of work and say, we can start tomorrow. Customers are typically surprised by that. As a partner, you can bring your own virtualized environment, set up the network, create an image, and be ready to start. As a matter of fact, at Microsoft, we have written a script that will launch a full production SharePoint site in six minutes. You're still going to sell your project-based work. You're still going to sell your architecture design. You're still going to sell your planning and building up of a solution. You're still going to sell that training knowledge or your knowledge transfer that you do at the end of your project. Nothing changes with project-based work. With managed services, you can now say, as a customer, we can monitor and manage that for you. Even better, you may be able to say, it may typically cost a certain amount to get it up and running, but then simply give us the lesser amount every month and we'll just run it for you. On the slide is a very rudimentary example with a lot of assumptions. You're going to get 3% margin because you own Azure through an EA, and then you could just charge list price to the customer, or you just pass it through at no cost. We see many partners just passing Azure at cost onto the customer. Then you're going to charge whatever you charge for your managed services to maintain those virtual machines, break, fix, maintenance, and so forth. For a very simple example of four servers plus managed services, you're looking at roughly 20% margin of $226 a month. You're going to sell your project work for $5,000 to get that up and running, and you're going to get some margin out of that. Bottom line, the biggest margin is going to come out of your monthly fees as you build that business. Project-based work is great, but you're in, you're out, and then you hope they call you again. But if you're managing their cloud environment for them, you're in and you stay in. You maintain it and you collect the net monthly bill. Who are they going to go to if they need to do anything else in the cloud? They view you as their cloud provider, so they're probably going to go to you. They're going to come to you with questions like, hey, we're thinking about doing this over there. Can you help us out? If you buy under an EA, level A pricing begins at 3%, with the exception of A-series virtual machines, HD Insight, and websites. Those are at 27%. Just to recap how you make money, the customer goes on the site. They open up a credit card account. They don't know what they're doing. They give you a call and say, you've got to come in here, explain this to me. I see that I can do authentication. I see that I can do some SharePoint on Azure. Can you help me out? You sell them the project work and then you register the sub-ID that you created for them to launch the project. You collect 
You're going to collect on the project whatever the statement of work is worth, and then you're going to plant that seed for the channel incentives for the next two years. Hopefully, that 20% is going to grow and grow over the next two years. Or the customer bought an EA last year. All of a sudden, you're having conversations with them. You took one of those conversation starters. You got a bite, and all of a sudden, you're going to show them how to use Active Directory on Azure. It's a small project. You're going to get paid on consulting services, and you're going to register it for your 20% incentive. The incentive is not linked to the transaction. It's linked to the consumption. Register every project. Or they come to you and they say, you've really been helping us. You manage our Exchange server, and then you helped us with Office 365. It's wonderful, but I got all these other components. Can you help me manage that and bring that to the cloud? Sure. We have that capability. We will bring it up on Azure. We will manage everything for you. We're going to charge you a monthly fee, and it's going to cost us some project-based work to get it up and running. Here's a quick recap of what you have to sell, the licensing options they can use to buy, and how you can make money through each transaction. Note, you will not get channel incentives if you are the provider. I want to make that clear. If the customer is paying the Azure bill, you can register it for incentives. If you are paying the Azure bill, in essence, you are the hoster, you cannot register it for incentives. Don't forget to sell support or recommend that the customer buy support. First and foremost, if you're thinking of becoming a provider or hoster with Azure as your data center, you better be looking at this. You owe it to your customers. Your customers are going to expect a certain service level agreement from you. You want to make sure you are protected by having the correct support program for you. If the customer is buying Azure, just make sure that they're aware that the basic Azure support may not fit their SLAs. Windows Azure offers flexible support options for customers of all sizes, from developers starting their journey in the cloud to enterprises developing business-critical applications. These support options provide you with the best available expertise to increase your productivity, reduce your business costs, and accelerate your application development. Support for billing and subscription management related issues as well as break fix issues is available at all support levels. Partners can purchase one support package and apply the support to customers they manage in their Azure tenant. On screen are important numbers for a number of countries around the world. Please note the number for your location. I will leave the screen up for about 30 seconds to give you a chance to find and write down the support number for your area. Thank you for taking the time to view this module. We encourage you to review the other Microsoft Azure sales training modules as well.